welcome to episode 12 of the Summer Knits podcast. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, where I share my works in progress, my finished objects, and plans for the future, and sometimes other random bits of information. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me. I do this podcast primarily to be more involved in the greater knitting community as a whole and to just um, foster community, um, a sense of togetherness uh, between knitters all over the world, and um, to just be a part of that vibe. Um, so thank you for joining me. I have a few things to share. Um, I had quite a few works in progress in the last episode. Some of them have had some work and some of them have not. So I would just like to share what I've gotten up to. I was afraid if I waited too much longer to film that the holidays would just eat up my time and I may end up not getting to film for a while just due to all of the commitments, various things going on with the kids and holiday parties and all kinds of things. Um, you may notice that I'm filming someplace completely different, although I am not very consistent with where I film in my house. I'm usually chasing the light. And it happens that my bedroom is the brightest room in the house typically during the midday. So it gets the most sun. Um, all the other rooms are fairly shaded. So I was going to take advantage of the bright light outside right now. I have all the windows open and it's like really bright and happy in here right now. So I was just going to use the light where I can. Um, so let's dive into finished objects. I have one that I have been working on for quite some time. Um, you may remember that I did the first of my cabled Thanksgiving socks for my sister in August with the intention of finishing them by her birthday in October. And then I ended up doing a hat for her because we found a vintage clover button that she wanted sewn onto a hat. So I ended up doing a cloche hat for her um, that had a twisted brim. It was very pretty and sewing that vintage shamrock onto it. So I just held onto the Thanksgiving socks and I it took me forever to finally make the second one so I had cast it on and not really done much besides the cuff and then all of a sudden like I did the cabled leg and I don't know how well you can see the cabled leg. Let's get some light on it there. Um, so I did the cabled leg and then like suddenly one day it just took off and finally just got it done. So um, I don't know where my other matching blocker went. This is my sock witch blocker. Super cute. Um, I will link the shop below, but I don't know if they have anything in stock right now. Um, the guy who did the carving has actually passed away. Um, and so I'm not sure what, if his wife still has things in the shop. Um, anyway, so yay, one Christmas present done and ready to be wrapped, but I didn't want to do that until after I had shared it with you all. Um, the next thing is an almost finished object, and I say almost finished because I do not usually count things as finished until I have woven in all the ends and blocked them. And the reason is if I tell myself it's finished, I won't pick it back up and actually finish it. So I'm telling myself it's not finished. I have to work on this one off and on. The yarn is so dark that at night I have to have tons of lights on to even begin to see what I'm doing. It took me forever to seam, and now I'm just going through trying to weave in a million ends, and that is the Christmas sweater for my dad. Um, you might remember, if you've been around a while, that I started this sweater in like 2006 or 2007, and I don't really remember. Um, and I actually gave him the pieces and balls of yarn <laughs> at Christmas that year and said I would finish it. And then um, amidst moving and other things, it got packed up and I didn't get it back out and finish it. And it's kind of like it snowballed in my mind what was left to do. Um, and it became, I was almost afraid. 
I was almost afraid to look in the bag because I had this fear that like there was more on it to do than I thought or it was going to be complicated and I would have forgotten where I was or something. So like it just blew up in my mind, which is kind of what happens with like if somebody sends me a message and I forget to respond and it's something that I should have responded to and then I just feel weird responding two weeks later and then it snowballs into I haven't responded in a month and it just... Um, so my brain blows things up like that, like just makes things into a much bigger deal than they need to be. So when I did finally pull the sweater out of the bag, all that was left was finishing one sleeve and putting all the pieces together. Um, I haven't made a pieced sweater in forever, but I hope that you will agree that this is worth it because I showed it... Um, the knitting finished, but not the seaming last time. And I'm not sure if I can get the whole thing in the frame. Like I said, I still have ends to weave in. Oh, it's inside out. That's why there's so many ends. I was like, I swear I pulled them all through. Um, let me get this right side out. So it is a dark purple and I'll see if I can get it to show up well on the camera and has lots of flecks of little color in it. It is a thick, warm, Aran weight yarn that is um, merino and silk. It is the Queensland Katmandu Aran, 85% um, merino wool, 10% silk, and 5% cashmere. So it's lovely in the hands. It's so bouncy and um, squishy, all knit up. I don't know if I can get that color. Oh, let's get the sunlight to hit it. So it's a deep purple, and as you can see, it's it's big. Um, my dad is much taller and broader than I am. Um, he's not tall and broad for like an average person, but compared to me. So it's, the sweater will block me. But you can see that there is a textured stitch pattern. I'm going to keep moving it around trying to catch the light. There we go. A textured stitch pattern in the body. And then the sleeves are reverse stockinette with a um, one by one ribbed panel running down the top of the sleeve. And then a cuff um, ribbing at the base of the sweater. And then you picked up for the collar and it was one by one rib at the collar. Um, so my mother is getting me a sweater of his that fits him well so that when I block this, I can try and block it to dimensions that I already know fit him well because I don't want to spoil the surprise by grabbing a tape measure and trying to go measure his body because he has probably completely forgotten about this sweater. So I'm really excited to actually give it to him on Christmas. This is my dad's Christmas present. Um, I will link the pattern below. It was from a Creative Knitting Magazine in um, 2006. It was September of 2006. This is the cover. It's all bent up because it was in my bag. But luckily I had taken really good notes. I had left everything on the needles. It was all there. And I was able to just pick it back up and do it. But like I said, weaving in the ends is taking a while because it is a very dark yarn and there are a lot of ends. I think it was I don't know, maybe 12 balls of yarn or something. Um, the Katmandu Aran aren't giant balls to begin with, so it, um, it took a bit, but it's beautiful and I'm very excited about it. I'm gonna fold it back up, put it over here. Um, so those are the finished object and the almost finished object. And then I guess it's works in progress. So I have reached the second half of the Muscleboro hat. Um, I'm not very far into the second half, but I have finished the orange and black. Oh, the needles are all tangled up in the yarn. That's all right. I was working on it this morning when I went to meet a friend for coffee. It's the first time I'd actually sat down in a coffee shop with a friend since COVID started, like back in 2020. So uh, it was really nice to just sit down and have coffee and catch up. Um, so I've just started the second half, which is black, but um, I'm not finding it hard to knit the all black because it's such a smooth knit, it's a smooth yarn, um, 
and it's just stockinette. The yarn for the black section is Knit Pick Stroll Fingering. Um, so it is 231 yards, 50 grams of 75% fine superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. Um, and I had a good bit of the black and orange left, so I may still use this as part of a pair of socks for my husband like I originally intended um, and get some more black and do it that way. Or I might make my dad a hat at some point because he got all three of his degrees, um, his bachelor's, his master's, and his PhD from the same school that my husband, sorry, I got fluff, <laughs> that my husband graduated from. So they, um, they're both into orange and black. So I might do that. I haven't decided yet, but um, don't you love it when you open a project bag and find something you lost that's completely unrelated to knitting? Does that happen to anyone else? I would like you to please tell me if that happens to you. I lost this lipstick. I couldn't find it. I know it looks clear, but it's a pH reacting lipstick. And um, I was super bummed because I love it for just like barely a touch of color and the touch of color happens to match my hair really well right now like in a sheer version <laughs> that's very silly but I'm really excited because I just opened this bag and found this lipstick which I totally thought I lost at the roller skating rink with my kids last week <laughs> that's exciting sorry anyway um it's been harder to work on his Christmas present because he's been working from home a lot recently and um, has his job schedule has changed and he's home in the evenings every night now. And he used to be gone a lot of evenings, so I had time where he wasn't here to work on things for him. And, and now I don't, um, which kind of spoils the fact that I've never made him a sweater and I really want to, but my time now is so much more limited than it used to be where he's not in the house. Um, so I have to figure out what I want to do about that. Do I still, I'm, I'm really drawn to the new Max the Knitter pattern, um, single malt. And I would really like to make that for him, but I'm going to have to work on it a little bit at a time on days he's not here or times that I am elsewhere knitting. I don't know. I'm going to have to think on that, but I got to get past Christmas first because I'm not starting anything else for him before Christmas. Anyway, this hat's going to be awesome and I can't wait to get it done. I think it's going to be really lovely. Um, I am doing the adult large. Um, I probably should have stuck with the adult medium, but it looks so small. I went ahead and increased to the adult large and I think it'll be fine. I love that the folded brim makes it so thick around the ears, um, toasty warm, and he can reverse it so it can be like way more orange and black with a black brim or the other way around. So I'm excited to finish that and give it to him and I really need to press on with it. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you may know that I gave my elf mail a bit more love um, over Thanksgiving, but I'm still, sorry, this is my waist yarn for my sleeves. Um, I'm still only that far down the body. And that was like a few hours of knitting, but being interrupted by kids wanting things like breakfast and stuff. It's weird how kids like constantly want to be fed. Anyway, so my elf mail is beautiful and I do love it, but there have been so many Christmas things taking my time. I'm a little concerned that it might be small, but I keep trying to remind myself the yarn is all superwash. It should grow. Um, I did swatch and I need to just trust the math. Trust the math. It should grow and fit fine. Um, so I am very excited about this eventually being a finished object, but a little more progress on the body. Elf male cow is still going on and I'm dropping stitches um, until the end of the year. And then anyone who has participated, I will draw some prizes. So don't forget the hashtag on Instagram or you can enter in the Ravelry group. Either one works. Um, I will try not to do um, knit alongs or giveaways that are exclusive to Ravelry since it is not accessible to everyone. 
So I will try and always present an Instagram option or an option here in the comments or some other way to enter as well. But if Ravelry is your jam, feel free to enter your finished objects over in the group for the podcast. And then let's see, new cast-ons. Okay, so I've done a little bit of work on my son's Firefly sweater, but not enough to warrant pulling it out again. But new cast-ons. I did start my Christmas ranunculus, and I love knitting the yoke of a ranunculus. I mean, who doesn't love knitting the yoke of a ranunculus? So this yarn is merino wool and silk, and it was in the December Southern Skeins Not Sock Box of last year. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it because at the time I looked at it and went, well, um, the yarn came so close to Christmas, but Christmas was basically over. And I just wasn't inspired to knit a Christmas thing. And then after I made my first ranunculus, I was like, you know what? I have two skeins of that. And it's DK weight, and it could totally be a ranunculus. So I went down one needle size from the pattern, and I did not swatch, and I'm just going with it. Um, so I'm working on a long sleeve ranunculus. I have put the body on hold, as is my usual, and done the sleeves because I wanted to get the sleeves done. They will grow a bit. Um, I did go ahead and do the diagonal cuff, and I'm working on this sleeve. But it took one ball to do just the yoke before I even started the sleeves. It took one whole ball of the merino silk yarn. So I want to give you a better idea of the color here. Um, you can see that it's kind of like a soft version of Christmas. There's the, the pale flecks of green and the red is more pink than red in a lot of places. Um, so I realized that I wasn't going to get the length I wanted out of the body probably once I had the sleeves done. I am finishing both sleeves and seeing, going to see how far I can get on the body with the yarn. Um, but in the meantime, I have talked to the dyer. She did have some skeins left over from last Christmas, but they were slight mismatches to what she actually ended up mailing out. So she's sending me two skeins that I'm hoping to blend together to get a closer match to what I've got going on. It may mean that there's a bit more green in the body and I'll fade it down. So I'm probably going to wait on the body until those two skeins get here. I'll finish the sleeve because I want the sleeves to match. Um, so I don't want to start fading that in yet. But I'm going to finish the sleeves and then when that gets here I want to finish the body because I want to be able to wear this for the month of December. It's going to be fun to have. I have not made myself a Christmas sweater before, so I'm kind of excited to have something that I made to wear for the holidays, and I'd like to get a lot of mileage out of it. So I'm definitely hoping to power through that as soon as the rest of the yarn arrives. Sorry, I had to move a bit because I forgot to charge my computer last night, and I was hoping to get through recording before killing the battery, but uh, apparently... It drained a bit faster than I wanted, so I had to move close enough to an outlet to plug in. But that's all right. Um, I'm almost through the things that I've been actively working on, and then I would like to share my first day of the advent calendar that I ordered and um, just a little chat, and then I'll wrap it up and keep this one kind of short, and I hope that I'll get to film again before Christmas. But let's move on to an exciting cast on that was unexpected. Um, it was a last minute decision. I've been resisting the test knits all month. I hope the computer's not bouncing around too much for you guys. I'm sorry if I'm moving a little bit and it's moving. Um, I've been resisting signing up for test knits because I knew I had so much I wanted to do for Christmas, so much to power through, and um, as much as there have been so many beautiful designs come out recently, I was really trying to not overcommit myself or pressure myself, but Brogan did her most recent podcast and I couldn't resist her new sock patterns. Um, if you're not familiar with Brogan, she is Wooly, Wooly Witchcraft on YouTube and Instagram 
and she has some sock patterns coming out really soon and she did a test call earlier this week and I was like yes and the yarn combination that I used I have showed before when I was thinking about um, a pair of socks and it's been sitting together all caked up on a shelf and I keep looking at it going those yarns they just need to be together and when she put out the pattern I looked at all my sock yarn and I came back to that set and finally was like I need to do this um, and I thought about doing them for somebody else but ultimately at this point I think they're for me and if they end up not for me they'll go to my daughter but these are um, part of Brogan's new sock collection and I'm not sure if we're sharing the name I don't remember if she shared the name of the sock collection or not so um, I'm not gonna say but it's a two-week test knit um, so I have plenty of time because clearly I've already done um, the leg and the heel turn and I'm on the the gusset decreases right now so I just uh, it's a a one by one cuff and this is from my Madeline Tosh advent calendar last year that my husband got me and then um, the leg and heel are yarn that um, I believe it was the Southern Skein sock box for last October maybe I believe that the yarn was called pumpkin juice and the accompanying mini Oh, I don't even remember. And if it wasn't Southern Skeins, and I will try and go back and look this up and put the correct information there. If it wasn't Southern Skeins, then it was Crystal Skies hand dyed um, because she did a Harry Potter inspired series that I subscribed to back in 2020 um, when I was laying in bed after hip surgery and I really wanted to order a surprise box. I uh, found her subscription series and so I started in February of that year and she let me do a catch-up box so I got January's also um, and that was a seven month series to do all the books so I had done that and so that had been sitting for a while so I'm pretty sure the name of the yarn was pumpkin juice and I will try and remember which dyer it was by but um, both Southern Skeins and Crystal Skies hand dyed can be found on Etsy. Um, I use a lot of Southern Skeins just because I get her monthly subscription boxes because I love getting a monthly su surprise in the mail. Her boxes are really nice um, and very reasonably priced. And I like that I can just add on an extra skein so that if I get the not sock box, it's still enough yarn to actually do something with. Um, and that way I don't end up with a whole bunch of singletons, not sure what to do with them. But she has a sock series also, and I love those too. Anyway, this is a DK weight sock pattern that Brogan has done. And I asked her if she was good with holding fingering weight double, because I wasn't sure that I had any DK sock yarn. And um, as much as I love an excuse to buy yarn, I wasn't sure that I had time actually to go do that. So I wanted to cast on right away and she said she was great with holding the sock yarn double. So I'm doing that. I'm making the size small and I did try it on last night. Um, the heel feels a bit shallow right now, but given how this yarn behaved during swatching, it's going to block out bigger than it looks right now. Um, and it's going to soften up a bit and I'm just, I'm very excited about these. I'm using 3.25 millimeter needles and like I said sock yarn held double fingering weight held double it is um, so squishy and lovely and I just I like the eyelet pattern the simplicity and it's just gone so fast Brogan's directions have been easy to follow and the pattern is well written and you should watch for that pattern release because um it's a good one and I think she's releasing all three sock patterns together as a set and the others are beautiful as well um, I just happened to choose to test this one but there are some other stitch patterns in the collection that are gorgeous so 
That is Brogan of Wooly Witchcraft. And if you have not seen her podcast and don't follow her, go check her out because she's a lot of fun and honest and creative. And she and I have different color palettes, but we have very similar taste in patterns a lot of the time. So that is a lot of fun. And we have gotten to where we chat on Instagram. And I hope that I can call her a friend. So check out Brogan. The next thing I want to share is my advent calendar from the Creative Knitter. And this is probably going to jostle the camera a little bit. I'm sorry. She is in Canada. Um, but so far, everything I've ever gotten from her has been absolutely worth the shipping to the United States. Um, I'm not sure if she ships worldwide, but I ordered her advent calendar um, back in like June or something. And this is her Merry and Bright advent calendar. So I'm fully expecting brightness every day of the month. And I think that this is going to be so much fun. I did open day one and I guess I put it back in sideways. But um, all 25 days are in here. This wrapped part you see here is the full skein for Christmas Day. So I am not unwrapping that. But I did unwrap the project bag that came with the advent calendar. Um, I think it was an option whether or not you wanted the project bag. But I want to be able to use the project bag all month. So it was, um, and I think she understands that because it was not fully wrapped up in the package. It was on top wrapped in tissue. Like the first thing you open is this beautiful project bag with a handle and drawstrings. And then I did open day one. So if you have also gotten this calendar and you do not want to see the color yet, then um, you should definitely skip ahead a couple of minutes because this is day one. It's called Berry Crush. Look at how bright and beautiful that is. So this is Creative Sock, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 20 grams is 80 yards. So... Um, and she recently opened a brick and mortar store as well. Um, I love, I adore her hand dyes, but her brick and mortar store looks beautiful. And if I ever end up in Ontario, um, I really want to visit her because she seems like a lovely lady. So check out the Creative Knitter if you are not familiar with her. Um, I know that I shared the comfort collection that I got from her last spring and it was so beautiful and the scents are amazing and it's my favorite wool wash right now and I am so excited for this advent calendar like so excited um so that's everything I have not bought any yarn since the last time we spoke I shared all my cast-ons and my finished objects I'm still Finishing up that fox hood. It's still got a little bit of sewing and I need to find some wooden buttons. Um, and I still have to put the loops on that baby sleep sack, but it'll be done soon because that baby shower is this month. And all the Christmas things, so many Christmas things. I need to finish my son's sweater so I can wrap it. Um, sorry. I also need to make his socks because he keeps asking and how fast these socks that Brogan wrote are going. I just, I just need to do his socks um, because they'll be so quick. He's six years old, his feet are tiny. Um, I just hadn't been very socky for a little while and I think it's because I was stuck on my sister's cable Thanksgiving sock, Thanksgiving socks. Um, but I just need to buckle down and do his because he really wants them and I want to encourage him wanting handmade socks because that's kind of awesome. So this is the chatty part now. Um, and I had this thought like right after I filmed the last podcast and I wanted to see what people thought. So um, please share your thoughts in the comments or um, let me just present my idea real quick. I One thing I love about the holiday season is getting mail. Um, that might sound weird, but I like getting mail that is not bills. Um, you know, a lot of times all we get in the mail these days is advertisements and bills and 
and most people, I mean, you can put your bills online even. So a lot of it's just advertisements and it's a waste of paper and it makes me kind of sad because we really try and recycle and reduce our waste in my house. So just getting junk in my mailbox, um, it doesn't bring joy. But I love getting holiday cards and New Year's cards from friends and family and it just... It brings me joy to come home to a little note and a pretty picture and things. And that's just one of those things that um, I really count on in December and I really love. And I wanted to extend the offer and there is absolutely no reciprocation needed, um, no obligation to do anything, but if you would like to receive a holiday or Christmas card from me, um, it may be that I will send out a few special treats as well, but I am going to put the link to a Google form in the show notes. And if you fill out that form with um, your postal address and name, I will send you some happy mail and I will try and get to everybody in December, but if it gets to be a lot, it may trickle into January, but there's nothing wrong with happy mail at any time of the year. Um, the only other requirement is that you leave a comment telling me your favorite thing about the holiday season or winter, um, and let me know what winter holidays, if any, you celebrate. Um, we celebrate Christmas, and I hope that no one would be offended to receive a Christmas card regardless of what you celebrate, but I will I will try and um, be sensitive if that is something that would bother you. If you'd rather just warm wishes for a happy winter or something, that's okay. Um, so just leave me a comment telling me what you celebrate, what your favorite things about winter or the holiday season are, um, and fill out the Google form with your address and I will happily send you happy mail. Um, and like I said, there may be a few extra surprises in the mail for some people. Um, I firmly believe in sending joy out to the world and the world will hopefully send joy back to you. I'm, but I just want to put that, that warmth out there, um, because it's something that makes me smile and if it makes me happy, maybe it makes other people happy too. So that was just my, my random thought. And I thought of it like the day after I filmed my last podcast, but um, I didn't want to just film like a three or five minute thing explaining my idea with nothing else because I was afraid nobody would watch it um, and then it wouldn't have the impact. Um, so please please fill out the Google form and leave me a comment and, and let me, let me send that joy out. Cause it will make me happy also to, I love sending things in the mail almost as much as receiving things in the mail. Um, I like knowing that little bits of happiness are winging their way around the world and there is no restriction to where I am happy to send cards anywhere in the world. So please don't let that stop you. I will, mail. I will go to the post office as often as needed. I just, I just would love to send out some holiday joy. Let's see. Um, a little bit of life chat. What else is going on? Um, we did get the house decorated last week and I am, I love the twinkle of Christmas lights, like the joy of all the decorations. It just makes the house feel special. And I like that it is only for a month. It's a limited time. It wouldn't feel as special if it was all year long. But one of my favorite things is turning on the Christmas tree early in the morning or late in the evening when there are no other lights on. And the only light is the glow of the tree. And you can kind of see the reflection of the light, the twinkle on some of the ornaments. And it just, it just feels so cozy and, and happy to me. But I've had a hard time with the holiday spirit some days because it's been so hot. You might have noticed that I didn't wear any knitwear um, today. I had 
on my Easy Eyelet cardigan earlier, but let me be honest with you, it's warm here. It's really warm, and that's not super normal for December. It's going to be almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow, and that's hot for December. Like, I think our average temperature is usually in the 50s in December, and today it's like 72 or 73, and like I said, it's going to be almost 80 tomorrow, so that's been a struggle because like I have all these sweaters and things that I would like to wear that I had been waiting. First, I was waiting for fall, and then I was like, okay, okay, I'll wait for winter. Well, it's, it's December, and I should be able to wear at least my thinner sweaters, but I got home from running errands and grabbing some food for, um, the kids school is doing a food drive and I was so hot. I had to shed layers. Like I had leggings on with my dress and everything. It was just, it was not happening anymore. Um, so it also makes it kind of hard to work on some of the bigger knitting projects cause you don't even want the weight of the wool in your lap. Um, I have a blanket. I think I told you guys about this when I was confessing all of my sins of not finishing. There's a blanket in an end table that's actually a chest um, that I'd like to get out and finish. And I think I had an idea of who I want to finish it for. Because um, originally I had started it for one person, but I really think they wouldn't end up using it. So I had an idea of who I want to finish it for, so hopefully after the first of the year, once we get past Christmas, I can pull it out of the chest and share it with you guys and get to working on it because I do think that I have an idea of where that should go now. And I think that that, knowing where it should end up, will give me the motivation to actually do it. Um, so... I'm excited about that. There's there's so many things to look forward to. I mean, I get, I know that I have more plans than I have time, but you know, why not? Why not dream and imagine and, and just do as much as I can? So let's see, what else with life chat? Um, as I said, my husband's home more. I don't know if that's going to affect my knitting time other than knitting things for him, I do know that it has definitely affected how long it takes to get his stuff finished. But um, we'll see, because I, you know, it's been a while since we could spend evenings consistently together and things. So, um, but it is really nice having him home more. Um, the dogs, oh golly, I spent so much time at the vet with my littlest dog recently. But he's doing better. He has pancreatitis, but he is on the mend. Um, anyway, so many random things. I know I could go on and on, but really, if you're just here for the knitting, then <laughs> you don't care. I'm not saying, okay, whatever. I'm going to start babbling if I keep going on that. But anyway, um, oh, sales. I noticed... Um, there are so many pattern sales right now and you know over Black Friday and Cyber Monday there were lots of yarn sales too and it was really hard to resist them. In fact I tried to place an order um, at Wooly Knit and because I'm in the US I made a cart and tried to check out and it said I had to wait for a shipping request. Well because of the time difference I had to wait till the next day so that was Saturday night. So Sunday they sent me the shipping quote and I clicked complete your order and by that time one of the cones that I had selected had sold out. So I tried to replace it with a different color of the exact same yarn and because of the change in the cart it wouldn't let me check out and made me re-request a shipping quote. Well because of the time difference I didn't get the shipping quote till Monday and then when I clicked on it even though customer service said that they would honor the same price um, the cart had reverted to full price. So I am still trying to work with customer service to actually place that order from Wooly Knit. And if they are able to, to make that happen, then I'm excited for some wool cones. But otherwise, I mostly resisted. But I did want to mention that um, 
Hannah from Herb Garden Knitwear is um, if you buy a pattern, you can gift a pattern. And you should check out Herb Garden Knitwear um, on Ravelry or Instagram. But right now, if you buy one of her patterns, you can send her a message and tell her the Ravelry username of the person you want to gift a pattern to, and she will stealthily add it to their Ravelry library. And I think that that's really generous and a lot of fun and a, another good way to share um, a little bit of happiness uh, this season. So check her out. She's got beautiful patterns. And then I'm not sure, there were so many, set, like I was so tempted by pretty much everything and my brain wanted to buy like 10 different holiday project bags. So anyway, I'm trying to resist. I am going to wrap this up because I did want to keep it relatively brief um, and not just a huge cumbersome episode. And I do hope to be back in a couple of weeks. I hope to film two weeks from today because after that, my kids will be out of school for two weeks for the holidays. And I just don't see being able to get the house to myself during that time. Either they'll be here or my husband will be here. Like, even if they go to their grandparents, I just don't see getting the time to myself to film. So I will try and film in two weeks and any Christmas gifts that are not finished by the time I film next, I'm just going to try and take nice photos of so that I can share them. Um, and then I also plan to take photos of the advent calendar every day. I don't know if I'll share them on Instagram. I had seriously considered doing vlogmas, but I just don't think I can commit the time. So I think I'm just going to stick with regular podcasting for now and maybe next year I can do Vlogmas or something. But anyway, I hope that you are having a wonderful December 1st and if you got holiday countdown calendars or advents that you are finding joy in all of those um, and joy in the little things and in working on something that just that just brings you a lot of creative energy and happiness. Take care, and I hope you come back and visit with me again soon. Don't forget to leave a comment and fill out the Google form if you would like some happy mail. Take care. Till next time.